midst of a multitude of those from every tribe and every town. We are your people, redeemed by your blood, purchased from death by your love. There are no words good enough to thank you. There are no words to express my praise. But I will lift up my voice and sing from my heart with all of my strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
I invite you all to stand as you are able. He is risen. He is risen indeed. The grave is empty. The stone is rolled away. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hands are clapping. Feet are rushing. Trumpets are blaring the news. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hearts are rejoicing. Voices are calling. Children are singing the news. He is risen. He is risen the grave is empty. The stone is rolled away. He is risen. 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 He is risen.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Our first reading for this morning comes from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our second reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the first letter at the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Our gospel reading this Easter morning comes from Mark chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. Go, Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, 
just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Well, friends in Christ, this is my favorite day of the year, the favorite day of the church year for sure. Um, the church is packed and, and we want to say hello to all of our friends in uh, the fireside room, in the community room, all the overflow seating up in the balcony. So glad to see everybody here. Church is packed. Families are together for uh, a great celebration of this uh, resurrection. Um, we've got flowers. We've got um, those, those snowbirds who have come back. It's just the greatest thing. Easter morning here at Christ the King. And we get to yell, he is risen! He is risen but today, today we get what is not my favorite resurrection story. Uh, it's a bit incomplete, the way that Mark tells it. In fact, it kind of leaves us wanting. We know rest, the rest of the story, but when we just hear this Mark one, it's kind of, mm, it doesn't have any disciples. There are no disciples in this story at all. It, it doesn't have, well, the 12 disciples. It does have some disciples. It doesn't have that foot race where, where Peter and, and the disciple that Jesus loved had that foot race out to the tomb. It doesn't have any of that. It doesn't have the gardener, the man who supposedly might be the gardener, who turns out to be Jesus. In this story, there is no resurrected Jesus it kind of leaves us a little bit flat and it does have uh, these three women it does have some spices like the other stories it does have the stone that's rolled away and the empty tomb of course but it doesn't have the typical uh, things that that there's uh, resurrection story usually has. It just doesn't have it. Mark's gospel instead has this young man. We don't, he's not even an angel. He doesn't get called an angel. Just a white uh, uh, robe that he's wearing. And he gives this greeting. And, and of course, um, terror and amazement are kind of the uh, emotions that uh, get uh, produced by that kind of a greeting. And then we have people who say nothing. Absolutely nothing. When we come to Easter, we want to yell, He is risen! He is risen. We want to shout as loud as we can, He is risen! He is risen. We want to celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ is risen! He is risen yes! But instead, Mark ends his gospel with this young man. That's, that's all it is. And, and this greeting and nobody saying anything. They just go home in terror and amazement and say nothing because they're afraid. They're afraid. But, you know, the young man, whoever he is, said to them, the first thing he said is, what? Do not be afraid. Have you ever noticed that doesn't really work? Have you ever, when I've been scared out of my wits and somebody said, oh, don't be afraid, it doesn't really help that much. You know, let's be honest. But, but this gospel, what if this gospel ends right there? That's it. That's all there is. It's such a bad ending that through the years, we believe that some scribes, some monks along the way, added some additional verses. If you open up to Mark, it goes on at chapter 9 all the way through 19. None of those words sound like the original Mark. And so we believe that those were just added on because along the way we thought, this isn't really right. We need some closure here. But I gotta tell you, I think Mark planned to end his message there. I think Mark wanted to leave it just like that because I think Mark is inviting us 
into that witness of the gospel. He's inviting us into the work of Christ's mission here on earth. See, these women, they were fearless. These three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary, and uh, Salome, uh, in Mark's gospel, they've been with Jesus ever since he's tried and sentenced to death. They are with him all the way out to Golgotha. They are with him as he's taken down his lifeless body from the cross. They follow and go out to the tomb where Jesus is laid. They then go home and they get their spices ready and, and get, get the, uh, the Sabbath over. And immediately that morning, as soon as the sun is up, they head out to the tomb. They went into the tomb. These women are fearless. But what happens then? They get confronted with something they didn't expect, and they became fearful. Do not be afraid, is what the young man in white said. And I got to tell you, in all of Scripture, any time that the words do not be afraid are spoken to someone, good things always follow. Like he is risen! Yes, good things always follow when you say, uh, do not be afraid. But what if, what if that was the end? We heard these scripture readings that Pastor Trish read. We know the other stories like the resurrection story in John and Matthew. It, there's all kinds of different things that inform us. But what if this was the only one there was? What if this was it? And it ended with, no one said anything. This young man in the white robe says to go and tell. Go and tell Peter and the disciples that Jesus is going to meet them in Galilee. What's important about Galilee? That's where it all started. That's where this entire ministry began. Galilee is the home of Nazareth where Jesus grew up. Galilee, that's the home of Cana, where Jesus performed his first miracle, turning water into wine at that wedding. Galilee is where he raised a, a boy from death, the, the son of a widow. Galilee is the place of the Mount of Transfiguration, where his disciples saw that this was truly God's son. In other words, what he's saying is, Go back to where it all started. Get busy with the ministry that has been set before us. Go and carry on the mission that Jesus started. He's inviting us to do that too, friends. It's not just for the disciples. That invitation is for us. Because God's mission depends on the resurrection people like us who must carry forth this ministry. It is up to us to complete God's mission here on earth. And this today is an invitation to do just that. I know often after an Easter service, you know, we get through all this stuff and, and you have to head out and catch some brunch and you got family over and maybe you got to get some stuff ready still at home and it's all so hectic and you walk out and you say nothing. It's just another Easter, another fun celebration where some crazy pastor yells, he is risen! Glad you're still with me. But today, today, Make this the opportunity that Mark is offering us, right? This Easter, don't walk out of these doors and say nothing. This Easter, commit to meet Jesus back there in Galilee. Pick up where he left off and continue the mission that he has and let's carry that mission to completion. Remember what he said, do not be afraid. He is risen. He is risen Go and tell the disciples and everyone else you can about this good news of Jesus Christ, for he is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Amen.
invite you to stand as you are able. Today, with the whole church, let us confess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son. And with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, you give life to your church by joining the baptized to the body of Christ. Bless the newly baptized as we proclaim the one whose death and resurrection makes us one in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give life to the creation by renewing the earth in every season. Curb our exploitation of natural resources and cause us to preserve the health of plant and animal habitats. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give life to the world by laying a cornerstone among the nations. Rebuild the powers and principalities around us in ways that protect the vulnerable and raise up the lowly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give life to those in need by anointing of your Holy Spirit. Comfort those who suffer. Encourage those who care for the sick. Bind up the brokenhearted and wipe away the tears of all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give life to this community of faith by infusing us with love for one another. Inspire us to reach out to our neighbors in meaningful ways and bring the joys of community to a wider family of people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give life to your saints by setting a banquet table of rich food. Feed us with the bread of life and bring us with all your saints to the feast that has no end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the spring of new and everlasting life. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. And his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, he and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there. Just be 
we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Today we'll be receiving communion through intinction. You'll receive a wafer and then you can dip it in either the wine, which is the darker color, the grape juice, which is the lighter color. If you accidentally put it in your mouth before that, keep it in there and we'll give you a new wafer. <laughs> and you can, it's, it's a bonus. So today we'll be having two stations up front, one station in the rear, and then one station, I'll be traveling out to uh, the bottom of the balcony steps first to get the balcony folks, then off to the community room, and then finishing up in the fireside room. So don't worry, we'll get everybody communed. All are welcome to receive the sacrament.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Just a few announcements. The first is, I have to try it once. He is risen. He is risen. Thank you. (laughs) Welcome. Welcome to Easter worship. A special welcome to those of you that are visiting with us. We hope that you're able to come back and join us again very soon. If you are a little one and you are getting kind of antsy, make sure you check out our children's play area over by the courtyard doors and find some Easter fun then. And I hope as well that you've come hungry and that you're able to stay and join us for Easter breakfast. So we'll be serving that again after the worship service. That's a fundraiser for our youth for summer camping activities. And so please join us for that. A thank you as well to all who contributed Uh, for flowers either in memory of or honor of loved one or someone important in their life. Thank you for helping make our worship service a beautiful service this morning. Just a reminder that you can take one of the plants home after our 11 o'clock worship service. The office is closed tomorrow. If you're not able to do it today, please stop then on Tuesday to get your plant. And we do begin the Easter season the next several weeks we will be continuing to celebrate Easter and we will be returning to our normal schedule so that includes again community supper this Wednesday from 5 to 6 and our 615 worship service and education there's commission meetings this week lots of other things happening both this week and in the weeks to come so make sure you pick up a copy of the good news on your way out so you'll know what's coming up and then finally just a reminder about the pledge drive that we are now wrapping up this time of the year. Many thanks to those of you who did pledge and who contributed, especially to those of you who are first time pledgers. We are very grateful for that. And uh, we will have members of our stewardship mission team out and about to help you. If you still need to get your pledge card in, we've got some here for you this morning and the pledge box is in the narthex. So uh, watch for one of those members to help you. But again, Thank you for all of that as we continue our ministry. I invite you now to stand as you are able in order to receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
go and share the good news. Thanks be to God.